Greetings, true believers. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And folks, this is a troubled time in the Marvel canon, not just in the uh, Civil War that has broken out within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also for our dearly beloved creator himself, Mr. Stan Lee, who this past week, his beloved wife, Joan Lee, passed away at the age of 93, I believe, Dragon, I hope. Uh, 95, okay. actually. They had new information. 95. 95. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, folks, uh, this isn't obviously a huge celebrity passing like a Robin Williams or a Carrie Fisher, but this woman shaped so much of Marvel and... She was just the backbone of one of the most creative men in the industry and one of the guys that we just look up to so much and we just respect so much. Like, this was her, this was Stan Lee's rock. She was Stan Lee's rock. So it only felt appropriate, especially because of the timing where, you know, as one Marvel character appropriately enters the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a beloved Marvel icon departs us. And Dragon, it's just so bittersweet. You know what I mean? The day that Homecoming released, Joan Lee passed away. It's like, it's almost bitingly poetic. I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, we're here to uh, pay tribute to the woman behind the man who created Spider-Man and all kinds of different other beloved Marvel characters. Dragon, I'm drowning myself. Please save me. Folks, believe me, this, is a, this, this year has been literally a killer. It is... We, we've lost a lot of good people in the beginning of this year. It's been really rough. Middle of this year, by this point, I'm saying it's been getting really rough and all throughout this year. We've been losing some great people, and I never would have imagined we'd, we'd lose Joan Lee because one of the things you never want to – we never wanted to make this. We never want to have to make a video like this. Same thing with any, any great kind of figure in, you know, figure in the history of not, but pop culture, uh, comics, or storytelling in general. You never want to lose an, an icon lease. And the great thing about Joan Lee is that Joan Lee has always been, as Tiki said, kind of the woman behind the man, Stan the Man, if you will. <laughs> and that she is what I like to think of as the great unsung hero of Marvel. Now, of course, we're not the first ones to point this out or to say this. We're going to be, we're, we got to give Joan Lee her due because here's the thing. Realist, to be realistic here is unfortunately... Only like your diehard Marvel fans have heard the story a bunch of times about how uh, how Joan Lee factors into Marvel in a very important way, which we'll get to right after we get to our we initial. Make a John Lee Hancock biography about it. Well, T, we kind of have something a little better, and almost we have something almost better currently. We have there's this documentary uh, that about Stan Lee. It's called Stan Lee with Great Power, which stars, of course, Stan Lee and Joan Lee factors in as almost as a co-star. In fact, she is in through the whole thing and she is a, uh, she's a key player. So if everyone, so I encourage everyone right the get go of this before we can dive into it here. Everyone, you know, honor, honor the Lee family by watching because it covers everything in Stanley's life. And it's just, it's, you know, from, uh, from whenever the documentary was made, which I want to say is 2011, maybe mm -hmm. it's uh it's, it's an excellent documentary. It really it adds some great layers of Stanley. You never really knew about the guy and it really shows the great love story between him and his wife throughout the thing. It's, it's a really, it's a beautiful, Beautiful working Stan Lee with great power. That's what it's and Dragon. I mean, like, just in terms of like putting a pop culture spin on this whole thing, I honestly feel like the real life Carl Fredrickson has lost his Ellie. Like, in that's many ways, how it feels. <laughs> John Lee, in many ways, was again. I don't want to just kind of belittle the the death by like making these these comic comparisons here, but I'm just it feels very fitting given you know it's Marvel and so it's, you know, encompassed Stan Lee's life in such a profound way. It's she was his Mary. She was his Mary Jane and his Gwen Stacy, quite literally his Gwen Stacy in, in terms of, well, let's, let's, let's get to our reaction before we really continue okay. to, to, to reminisce there. So, so uh, you, you had, had, had different, doing? yeah, we had different timelines. Um, it was actually about an hour before, and I think I was just browsing Facebook and just kind of randomly saw an article that, uh, you know, that Joan Lee had passed away and, uh. You know, Dragon, it was like I was all getting ready to go see Homecoming. You know, I had bought my tickets in advance and everything. And so while Homecoming was great, you know, it's just like, it, it, again, it's just kind of going to kind of be one of those weird, you know, sort of ironic, poetic things that she would have passed the day that I, you know, the day that Homecoming opens to the public. Because, of course, Spider-Man, more than any other character, is kind of like the embodiment of Stan Lee. We'll see that when we talk about the ending to the animated series that you just showed me. But uh, 
you know, so that's kind of, that's the gist of it for me. I just saw it on Facebook and it just sort of cast a bit of a melancholy shadow over my uh, first time viewing Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, for me, uh, again, Homecoming does factor in absolutely to uh, when I heard the news. I, I, I saw Homecoming and, uh, you know, we, we, the group I was seeing the movie with, you know, some buddies and of mine, we were all sitting next to each other watching the movie and we're all having a really good time. And then, uh, you know, what you do when you like, uh, when the post credits are coming, basically, so there's usually one guy's going to see if there is like a post credit scene, which you guys have assume there is, but there's always that chance that you're going to have like a weed and pulled on you, like from a, from Age of Ultron. We're like, oh, no, 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 very post end crazy. <laughs> No post credit scene at the very end. So you know, I, I'm sure that he was checking that on his phone or something. So yeah, we have the mid credit scene. Then right after that, my my guy here is checking uh, checking his phone to see if there's something at the very end. And uh, then he's just kind of struck by you know kind of the the news, I guess, like Yahoo News or something, just you know, mm -hmm. something that informed him while he was in the midst of doing that. And uh, then he just kind of looked very seriously at the rest of us, and he said, uh, "Stanley's wife died." Of course, I I know I, I know generally from the various stories. And again, with great power, I've. I've you know, from various stories told by Stanley, so I, you know, I've always kind of, I actually, this this is going to sound really silly, just so I can bring it up, because I mean, it's appropriate. Um, when Stanley went to Comic-Con, I've, I've seen Stanley twice, and uh, and it was either the first time or the second time, uh, no, probably first, I am, um, I gave I, I usually like the people I really respect at Comic-Con, I like to give them like a little thank you note, like some sometimes some fan art. Right, right, yeah. What I did with Stan Lee is I uh, I drew some, I basically I drew him in the middle and I had because again I was been fascinated by kind of the relationship the creators has I basically did like homaging Spider Man that great Spider Man thing it was like he's Spider Man's in the middle and around him are heads of his loved ones and you know like all the all the supporting characters so I had various. You know, drawings of various people from Stanley's life, which I painstakingly looked over, like oh trying to get God. the drawing. Wow. Right. So I had, <laughs> so I had, uh, so stands in the middle, looking really proud, so arms crossed, all prideful and stuff. You know, looking all cool. And off to the side, you had people like Jack Kirby, uh, John, uh, you know, John Romita Sr. I had uh, uh, J.C. Lee, who you rarely see, and I thought that I had the Lee family in there. So I have his daughter J.C. Lee, and you know, the, the grown, the grown version mm -hmm. of her, and I also. Have uh, Joan Lee there, right next to Stan, like on the left side. There's so, you know, have like nice, all the nice. all the loved ones there. So again, I've, I've, I'm familiar with, uh, with Joan Lee and the, and the family for you know from that history of storytelling of, of all the interviews we've had with Stan Lee, like Stan Lee and Kevin Smith's interview, which of course is a memorable one that factors in Joan Lee on the DVD. So of course. anyway, so when I hear this news, I'm like, oh my god, no! I'm like, it's like after such the height of 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 fiction met by crushing reality. That's the only way I can really describe the moments like the height of kind of elation, like, yeah, Spider Man he's he's back and we finally have Spider Man with the at the in the MCU kind of planting his feet firmly in the universe and it's like, man, that's like that's so that was a fun experience. And then you have like crushing reality. Like it's like almost like a like a cruel trade off in the world. Like I'm gonna give you you can have Spider Man but it's like coming at a great cost. I'm like, oh no, it's I just I, the the breath was taken out of me. I was just kind of processing and it was, we were all just kind of taken back and processing because I had shown them like uh, a week or so like uh, maybe the the previous month of June I showed them that that Stanley documentary and they they all had a familiarity with Joan Lee so it's like it really kind of struck all of us right right yeah yeah okay I mean you know I, I, I obviously dragon I think you are going to be more familiar with her in general because you're way more of kind of the hardcore nitty-gritty Marvel fan than I am but uh just from the things I've been able to look up from her over the years, uh, definitely seemed like a very classy woman, very, very well spoken for, uh, you know, very, you know, not afraid to poke fun of Stan Lee, which is always nice, you know, always fun. Uh, and then Stan Lee himself, you know, just the interviews he says talking about Joan Lee, like, you know, he tells the story with such a boyish charm, you know what I mean? Like, well, I got out of the military and I thought I needed a wife. So that's what I did. I go, I went and found myself a wife. <laughs> it's <laughs> such know, a beautiful he, story that Stan tells how he met Joan. He just, he just tells it so matter of factly. Uh, but the dragon, you just literally just now showed me the ending of the Spider-Man animated series from the nineties, which features a, uh, a cameo by the real Stan Lee in an awesome way, which like I said, dragon, I feel like that, uh, I'll, I'll link this down in the description too, if folks want to check it out. Uh, 
you know, it's just, it's such a great kind of encapsulation of how Spider-Man has affected Stan Lee and how Stan Lee has affected Spider-Man and how they're basically one in the same. It's a beautiful tribute. And of course, uh, I, I'm terribly sorry, Dragon. Give me the name of the show. Yeah, I, I should probably explain. So Tiki really hasn't gone through the entire Spider-Man animated series. He's a little no, lost on, on on how Joan Lee factors in here. So Joan Lee, they cr they create a character. I forget if it was created the ground up from this. At the very least, Joan Lee uh, has had a as, not as many as Stanley. She's had a few cameos, mostly in animation. She's done a few voice roles, and the most prominent voice role she actually got a character in Spider-Man the animated series mm -hmm. as. Madam Web, who essentially was kind of a okay. cryptic mentor of Spider-Man, kind of like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you will. Which is really, really cool, because in a lot of ways, uh, in real life, Joan Lee was inspiring Stan Lee, and in turn, that would inspire the creation of Spider-Man, so it's all kind of a full-circle story there. She was absolutely his muse in, in, in various ways, sure, and sure. Uh, let's just kind of... Let's, let's hit upon like the big one. The moment everyone's talking about, and this, what I was getting at, at the beginning there, it's like, now everyone's going on about this story. Only well, your diehard comic fans knew this. And importantly, I just hope that you know people people now are, are, are getting to know this story. I'm, I'm happy with that. But same, I wish like we, we really should have appreciated. I wish everyone kind of learned this story beforehand. You know, it's like, again, she's, yeah. that's why it's yeah. like that, un, like, that's why she's like that great unsung hero in comics. And this, just to go over the story here for prosperity sake. So, uh, way back in the day, and I'm going to add like a few details that people don't really bring up a lot with this story. So very, very simply, just in this, in the era of the comics, of course, you had timely comics way back in the beginning of Marvel, before it was even called Marvel. That introduces Cap, Submariner, and the robotic human torch. So those are the three that Stanley did not create, or like you know, those aren't the Marvel era that Stanley ushered in. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, there was a wartime. There was like in the in the 40s. So after the war, obviously, comics with heroes were in it. Were in a, a big decline and what happened is uh, that's when we had the transition the romance stories to westerns basically we could do comics like Archie comics but we couldn't do any any superheroes because they were losing their steam they were losing their thunder DC was just kind of clinging on with all they had because uh, that's DC mostly was bombarded by the Frederick Wortham you know attacks from on the comics industry like McCarthy hearings but for comics and uh, that's why Batman, of all characters, kept going through, like, the, the really weird sci-fi phase in the 50s, and that's how we kind of, like, you know, the campy era of Batman in the comics, all because they're just, they're rolling with it, where Marvel is just, like, uh, this is where I get the Stanley and all this story. I, I'm going somewhere with it, folks, is that uh, DC, they're, they're rolling with the punches. Stanley is saying, you know what, I, can't, I don't like what I'm, I'm creating here. I just, I, I'm done. I'm just, I, Basically, Martin Goodman is his publisher. The famous like, story of Stan Lee was like he was brought on to do temp work for what, like a summer? <laughs> yeah, and he ended up as kind of the big head honcho, the big editor in chief. Dragon, I'm not not to compare myself to Stan Lee because I'm totally not, but like it kind of reminds me of how I got brought in at the last minute as a guest judge on the So You Want to Be an Imagineer competition. And then, yeah, I, I made it into a YouTube channel. That's almost got 600 subscribers. I'm so proud. Anyways, go ahead. So, you know, Stanley's getting kind of fed up with kind of the stuff that in the comics industry, again, like DC, he doesn't want to roll with it anymore because, you know, not really doing good stories. And basically, Martin Goodman's telling him, look, look, we're just doing, basically, we're not we're not going to experiment with comics as a medium. We're just going to, like, put out funny books. We're not really going to, you know, don't, don't put as much like, thought and character development. People just want to see, like, funny stuff happening. Like, it, it, again, just basically, it's it's uh, style over substance. Stanley doesn't really want any part of that, you know. You know, like who who appreciates comics? That was kind of the mentality in the day from, uh, from Martin Goodman. So, uh, so Stanley, he's, he's saying, you know what? I, uh, I, I he's he's seriously contemplating quitting, and he's airing this out to his 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 confidant for many years, of course, uh, Joan Lee, and uh, and Joan gives him the best advice in the world. And just the uh, Stanley always lovingly reminisces of, like why he loves his wife so much. Oh yeah, you know she she points out something that he didn't consider that again shapes the the course of comics as an industry as we know it in this little moment here. It's such a such a profound moment where where she says, "Stan, if Stan, if you're gonna quit, why don't you do the book you want to do? I mean, worst case scenario, they fire you and you want to quit anyways. Do the book you want to do as kind of like a last like you know like kind of a last stand out the door almost." He does. It's the Fantastic Four. It goes over mm. fantastically, and uh, Marvel. The, again, the Marvel error is uh, is more. I forget when they actually had the Marvel name on the books because it when it went from timely it Marvel. Timely, to Marvel. yeah, yeah. 
I forget when that was, but the point is, you know, the Marvel era is really ushered in from Fantastic Four onward I because say, of that moment. I want to say Captain. I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, the Fantastic Four was the first mainstream Marvel series, so I want to say it was right around that point. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so again, that, that's kind of the, that's the huge contribution to the medium that that uh, she has, and of course, it's the constant inspiration in, in various aspects. And speaking of one of those aspects, to kind of go back to kind of how Stan met Joan in the first place, we're kind of we're going a little over the place with this, but harken back to that. Uh, of course, Joan Lee famously, uh, she kind of was the inspiration for uh, Gwen Stacy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Stanley had the best pickup line ever. I think he was starting the story earlier on that you know when uh, Stan comes uh, comes back from war. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's looking for he's looking for a wife, and he he's essentially set up on a blind date. And before he gets to the blind date, he's kind of <laughs> sidetracked, and he bumps into the, bumps into Joan, and uh, he has like the best. But he looks at her, and again, he's he's dumb because again, it's kind of like looks very much like Gwen Stacy. Again, it's just Aww. like utter utter beauty and, and perfection in a woman through Stan's eyes here, and Stan is the best line ever, saying, "Like the, you're so beautiful. You're the face I've I've been drawing for so many years." Right. Oh God. Oh God. That's such a pickup line. And then, of course, I love when he tells the story. He's like, "I don't even know what happened to the girl I was supposed to meet." <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, and, and here's just to show you how 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 love how wonderful how true wonderful this relationship is is because you know she was she was married to someone at the time at that moment. Yeah, and then six weeks later, it's like <laughs> Stan Lee, the home wrecker. <laughs> in si and this Excelsior! Is a in six weeks, not only oh, was man. it to, oh, this, there's the beauty of it. In six weeks, you know, he went to I believe she was in Nevada at the time in Reno, Nevada, and they was the point is in, in six weeks, he won her over so much they actually actually got divorced, then married to him. It was in the same building, yeah. so yeah. In like separate rooms. So she divorced her her other husband, which essentially I believe is that she puts it mainly it was a marriage so she can keep her uh, you know citizenship in the country if I'm right. A marriage of convenience. Yes, that's I believe that's yes. That is a, yeah. Anyway, marrying you know, English, so so uh, yes, yeah, she uh, she divorces one man, and within an hour she marries the the love of her life. I mean that that's an amazing story. Only Stan, the only you can't even write that story. You know, it's that literally Lee. sounds like something that would happen in a Stan Lee comic. <laughs> oh man! Oh yeah, and again, just, she's always been his muse, and then something that just to hit a point with great powers. And great powers is wonderful little story here. Where, Joan, where, where Stan and Joan are basically telling the story, and Stan's telling the story how he had this typewriter that, through all his career at Marvel, he had written all the great stories on. This, this he loved this typewriter to pieces. And uh, one day, Joan was just really angry. Was really angry about something, and they, it was such a scene. You know, it, it being married for as long as they had, it was near seventy years. They're married for like mm -hmm. sixty something, seventy years. And uh, in that time, again, they you know you don't remember all the arguments. And this, then when they're going through it, they're they're saying, well, like, probably over something silly. Like she really hated like how he clutter up the the room with his stuff. You know, all his mm -hmm. comic stuff, they had like the baskets of paper, reams of paper and stuff all over the room. So she gets really mad at him, and she and Stan does and thinks she's just she's, she's just going to calm down. Basically, she grabs the typewriter. Stan's holding his heart in his chest, essentially. He's like on the edge of his seat, oh, and she <laughs> smashes it to the ground in a in a billion pieces. And he just, oh god! And they, 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 when they're telling the story, it's in a, like, a very loving capacity. Obviously, at that time, it just kind of blew their minds at the time, but it's. Uh, it just shows you that she had a fire in her, that, that Joan yeah, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. At the same time, and this is something Kevin Smith really hit upon, that, uh, and I, I don't mean just to keep hyping it up, I'm saying if you really want to get to know Joan Lee, get, I recommend everyone great power, but uh, there's this beautiful moment where she's just kind of overcome with emotion in the movie where, uh, I'm sorry, something Kevin Smith was uh, has been saying in, in in reference to her passing is that he always said when he when he talked to Joan Lee, especially recently, he did a recent interview with Joan Lee, in which they kind of went through this. Uh, Aww. Joan Lee uh, said, basically, you know, it's like it's always when everyone when basically how how are, how do you feel about your husband's success? Essentially, that's the main question, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Everyone always says Spider Man this, Spider Man that, Spider Man, mm -hmm. uh, Spider Man this, and they don't. And she got really kind of, she got kind of emotional in this moment. She mm -hmm. says, but they don't know how truly good a writer he is. I mean, he's so much. Basically, saying he's yeah. so much more than Spider 
Stan, uh, Stan Lee certainly has a style on his, all his own, and it's a corny style, and it might not hold up too well for modern critics and whatnot, but god damn is that style full of charm, you know? It's like just charm and personality just leaps off the page of any Stan Lee written work. The best thing about Stanley, whether his works hold up as well, again, the 60s, these were, these were mind-blowing. Like, again, these were like you know, laying the foundation of what we do with comics now. That's it's, it's why it's always important. But I'm saying even if you look back at it now, you got to admit, these are really good ideas. Like, Stanley's always been like a brilliant idea man. That's, that's kind of an eye slider to it, being an idea man. That's the one thing I like this. Hopefully, my, my wildest dreams, I like to be a good idea man. <laughs> and uh, with that, and the reason I'm bringing it up is that this is harking back to this moment you actually get. The, she mentions like the poetry that Stan writes, and in the documentary, you get to see her react live to one of his poems. Because Stanley wrote oh my God. almost every oh. day, and oh. this is like for Valentine's Day or their anniversary. I can't quite recall. Basically, on stationery, like he drew like a little. Again, it's not like he's a new artist, but he's well. Yeah, again, oh. he's. He, more writer than an artist. He drew like a little spider, you know, a little spider light logo, essentially, and a Spider Man mask in a circle. That is fucking on the adorable. Paper. And she <laughs> reads, she reads the, she reads the poem. But basically, it's a loving poem about being married to the most, you know, woman I love most in this world. And she, and she, she hides her face because she's crying. It's just, it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, she just loves this man so much, and it's like, oh, oh my, my god, god. <laughs> you're gonna make me cry, dragon. Wow, that's so. That's wonderful. what I'm saying. Tiki never, and like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to my point here. What I want to uh -huh. say with you, with why this relationship is so special in comedy, soon, but. Sure, sure. I mean, we're getting to the getting to the end. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, so in comics, I want everyone to keep this in mind. In comics, with writers and artists, both individually, you know, writers and, uh, and artists, especially when they work together as teams, the spouses and the you know the women behind the men and the spouses, depending if they're married or not, uh, are are absolutely key. Like, look, I'm going to give you some of the greatest pairings of writers and artists, and to show you how how pivotal the, the these women behind the men are. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, one of my favorite recent teams. Scott Snyder, his wife is a nurse. He constantly calls his wife asking details for the stories about like kind of medical stuff that would have mm. much to her annoyance, but he does that. <laughs> and uh, Greg Capullo, Greg Capullo was in a really bad place before Batman. His girlfriend saved his life essentially and got him on got him on the mend. And and with that, you know, they nice, they nice. kind of met each other. You know, Snyder and Capullo, that other relationship gets started and again they're making beautiful Batman together. <laughs> and uh, and this one directly parallels the Stanley thing. This one's a Short of Stan Lee and Joan Lee, this is the other most moving relationship in comics, possibly. Jack Kirby and, and, and Roz Kirby. Jack Kirby's oh, appropriate place. that it'd be a Stan Lee and then Jack Kirby, yeah. <laughs> exactly. See, the way this worked is that Jack Kirby, you know, he's, 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 a, he's like a by the, he's like a blue collar artist if you've ever seen one. The most professional blue collar, like in, the architect of artist, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, he's. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: Roz ran things. She ran things. You know, she uh, she was the brains behind the whole organization. Like she's the one who would kind of come up with like your your, your Comic Con setup in a way. She would like sure, sure, yeah. I, I, I Dragon, I read that uh, the oh, I forget exactly what it's called. That one Marvel book, the the one with the blue cover. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of blanking on gotta, the name of it. How to draw the Marvel way? No, 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 no. It's like a big. Do you mean Marvel Comics, the story, like the 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 untold story? Yeah, yeah. It's like the untold story. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Roz Kirby definitely gets a lot of uh, a lot of praise in that book for kind of like being a big person that kind of designed the infrastructure of the company. Because it's so beautiful that she could be really motherly. Fans would literally visit this back in the day when this could oh happen. Fans would literally visit Jack Kirby at his house. Like if you were just a fan of the comics, you could stroll by and say, "Oh, hello, Mister Kirby," and you'd, you'd be welcomed in. And Roz Kirby would make oh you God. would make you food. She make us. She make everyone sandwiches. And, oh, that's amazing. And he, sometimes people would be able to. You could play chess with Jack Kirby. You oh could, wow! It was it was a fun time, <laughs> and and it's as as, as sweet mother as she could be. She was his most. The most virulent in the best way. She was like his most staunch defender, and like mm -hmm. she defended the man like there was no more. Like even like when people misprinted like some of Stanley, thinking that Stanley might have been taking right. all the credit. Sure, sure. She was the most. She would call Stanley the next day and ask him what's going on, and they have to explain. <laughs> oh no, no, please, Ross, they have to understand. They miss this quote, which is, it was just true. And it's like you got. You always have to remember that, folks. I mean, these these women are, are key in the comics industry. And Joan Lee again. Just that's 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 the that's one of the most loving relationships in comics. Or Ros like the most sturdy relationship in comics. And nowadays, we're still having it with our young guys like 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 Snyder and and Capullo. And I want to hit one thing with the animated thing. I think that's really uh really all I got. And we'll wrap up. Okay. So the reason I directed Tiki to that clip, folks, I just want to. Emphasize why and why I've been watching that clip recently is that 
in uh, in Spider-Man Amateurs, it ends on that moment, that, that beautiful moment where you know, not only is it Spider-Man meets creator, but it's also, again, Madam Web being kind of that mentor to Spider-Man. And again, Joan Lee really brought this great kind of regal quality to Madam Web. Like, you, this woman has been around. She knows her stuff. And it was also kind of modeled after her. And uh, it was just this beautiful moment in that in that last scene, like right before it's like, hey, we're going off the the fine Mary Jane. That's the very ending. But like right before that, you have this beautiful like moment of intersection that represents their relationship so well. Is that it's like a little, it's a fun little cutesy high school tease of their relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that Stanley has this beautiful moment. It's both of them doing the voice, and it's it's Stanley saying, "Who is that exotic lady?" <laughs> right. Just getting a glimpse at Madam Web, having no idea what's going on, because she just shows up that basically she's Spider-Man's ride, essentially. And then and after uh, Spider-Man leaves, he goes, farewell, Spider-Man, good luck to you. And then uh, as Spider-Man and Madam oh, Web... Oh, gonna get down. Uh, Maybe I'll just sit around and wait for the Fantastic Four to swing by. <laughs> <laughs> and on, basically, uh, on the way to the end of the episode, uh, Madam Web uh, and Spider-Man have this beautiful moment together. It's like the other side of that relationship, mm -hmm. and Spider-Man in between them again also represents very much kind of that connecting point between the real, the real life and then the fiction. Spider-Man says, "Man, Stan, that Stanley's one, one, he one heck of a guy, isn't he? What a nice guy that Stanley is." And then she has this uh, sweet line, and it's like such a wonderfully meta line when they're recording it. Got imagining, and she never for a moment did not love this man. She oh, says. Yeah. I think he is truly special. Oh, oh we just get a jewel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean, bear in mind, Joan Lee, she she endured a lot of stuff in her life. There was well, there was some tragedy she endured, and she was a really strong woman too. I want to hit that as well. And in the end here, I mean, she they had a uh, she uh, being being uh, you know someone who uh, being uh, an immigrant, I. Uh, is that no? It's you know, being someone from outside the country. That would be an immigrant. Yes. Sorry, I'm getting. I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, the point is, she um, she had trouble adopting children because she and Stan they had a they had they had a child they had J C Lee and then uh, they had another child who unfortunately passed away. Uh, she you know passed away a few days after she was born and then they tried to adopt and the immigration agencies for adoption they really. They gave her the runaround. It was like, and it's a beautiful moment in the documentary where they really have this bit where she's, again, Stanley got really mad at, like, you know, how they, like, kind of mm -hmm. basically said, you know, you would, because obviously she'd be a very fit parent, as, you know, because again, they, they, they wanted to have more children, but they just physically, physically couldn't. And again, just because she was out, you know, there was a religious thing, because, you know, like she had to convert to, to Judaism and stuff, and which there was, like, a lot of stupid reasons they wouldn't allow her to. Adopt child, adopt a child. And that's like some of the injustice that she suffered. She still remains like the most staunch. Again, kind of that the most staunch kind of creative muse who again took it all in stride. Yep. Yep. And uh, Marvel does a very nice thing. This takes us right to now. Is that Marvel did a nice little tribute to at least give Joan Lee kind of those 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 five minutes of just like acknowledging the woman who kind of made it all possible. Where. Stanley uh, was. It's called remembering Joan Lee. I encourage everyone to check it out. To hear like kind of Stanley in, in this year, kind of speaking about Joan Lee, and it's uh, it's it, it's it's really nice. It's like him kind of winning over the audience with again the how they met story, and it's uh, it's really um, yeah, it's really sweet. So I guess my final thoughts, folks. Of course, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we got to get this whole tribute out to the woman herself, but uh, I think we need to focus back around to the man. Um, I'm genuinely worried about Stan Lee. I don't want to go into a dark place here, but I just, I want everyone to, you know, like, I don't want to, like, flood him with tweets or anything like that, but, you know, I just want everyone to sing good vibes his way. That's all you need to do. Just, you know, just, just if you, if you believe in prayer, have him in your prayers, you know what I mean? And if you believe in good vibes, just send him good vibes, because, uh, you know, the man has done so much for us. He's basically created the entire fandom and comic empire, of which, you know, we kind of make our livelihood here on YouTube. Well, make our livelihood is arguable, but anyways, I digress. Uh, so, you know, as I said, folks, uh, the real life Carl Fredrickson has lost his Ellie this week. And I think we just all need to be in his corner and be there with him and, you know, cheer him on. And, you know, I, I just... You know, I, I I just I can't help but you know, Stan is all I come back to when it uh when it gets to this. I'm just really hope that Stan is holding up. So, I think all it's right. uh, that's gonna... all I got, Dragon. So just make this the final thoughts. Sure, uh, I think it's fitting that I I think it's great. Like one of the 
last year we did get a we got a Stanley cameo that did feature Joan Lee, which is the first the, the only time she was ever she was ever featured in live action as a cameo, which it was from X Men Apocalypse. It was like a beautiful little cameo. It was a very poignant cameo. It was like the end of the, it was like an end of the world type shot where like you know, missiles were firing at you saw the reflection on Stan's glasses and he was in front of their home, in front of their home. Stanley's just caressing, like holding his wife as if we're at the end of the world. And on ending on that kind of romantic uh, imagery, it's just like it's it's nice that she got like a moment in the spotlight as well as you know, the, cause she again she's. And probably like at the end, at an end of the world moment that Stanley's in, in part two, he would want. He would oh want yeah, him. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right, right. Like I feel, yeah, it's it's a great like little kind of like closing the book in, in terms of yeah, you want these two are always going to be in each other's arms like that. They're going to be like they were there at the beginning, and they're and they're going to be there at the end. It's kind of what that moment uh, communicates, especially looking at it now. And just the and this final thing here again, it's a, it's a it's a shame that we we've, we've lost you only. She's survived by Stan. And J.C. Lee, our deepest, our, our sincere and deepest condolences. And guys, we got to show Stanley more love than, than we ever had before. He, he, he deserves it. I mean, how your heart has to go out to the guy. And, and again, like anyone going through this loss, not just like because he's Stanley, but just because he's a, he's a human guy. Because the, mm -hmm. the love that he had with this woman, it's we we need to be there for each other. And Stanley, he's created all these characters who've been with us in our in our darkest most lonely moments and it's like those moments where we needed a hero we need to be a hero to stan lee by by being there for him with when he's like you know, he's lost that that figure in his life it's like peter parker losing an uncle ben it's like we, we need to be there for that you know for that we need to be here for, we need to be there for him more than ever so well rest said, in peace Jim Lee. well well said sir well said all right, folks. Well, like I said, you know, as one Marvel icon uh, passes on, sadly, we have a new Marvel icon joining the MCU. So life goes on in the circle of life and all that good stuff. But yes, Joan Lee will be sadly missed. And as Dragon said, our thoughts and prayers go out to the entire extended Lee family, especially Stan himself. And uh, yeah. May Joan Lee be uh, excelsioring up in heaven right now. I, I don't know. That's lame. Excelsior! 